Hat, sunglasses, Pepsi, notes, sources, thick skin, check. You already know. Let's go. Welcome to Golden Blue today, everybody. This is the College Football Channel. So if you like college football, hit the like and subscribe button. It's that simple. Also, send gear to represent your team and be a part of my background forever. All you have to do is send it to P.O. Box 360, Liberty, South Carolina, 29657. Yeah, time for another car video. It is one of those days. I am in the car school line. I'm waiting for my kids to get out of school. Schedule a little bit hectic today, so I thought I'd try to fit in a video now. Some of these are actually pretty good, though. Some of them, yeah, they are flops. So I will let you be the judge and decide whether this was a good car video or a bad car video. And you know what the funny thing is? The funny thing is whenever you say something in a previous video or a live show and it gets twisted into something that's not even recognizable, I think that is freaking hilarious. Hilarious. So uh, in a live show and a video, I believe it was yesterday or the day before, I did a comparison between Garrett Green and Pat White. And I clearly stated, no, I do not think that Garrett Green is the next Pat White. That is not what I was saying. What I was saying is the offense that we have to run with Garrett Green reminded me of the offense that we had to run under Pat White. That's what I was trying to say. That was the point that I was trying to get across. And I kind of reiterated that point last night in my live show. If you look at the history of West Virginia football, when have we had the most success? We've had the most success when we've ran that offense that we saw on Saturday against Oklahoma. What am I talking about? I'm talking about an offense that's a spread offense, sort of an RPO type of offense, run first offense, and have a quarterback that's a dual threat quarterback that can go out and make some plays whenever the play does break down. And that's exactly the offense that we ran under Garrett Green against Oklahoma. And yes, it is the reason why we beat Oklahoma. Now, I, I saw a couple of comments in the live show that said, yeah, Garrett Green's a good backup quarterback. I agree with that to a certain extent. He's a good backup quarterback in another system. But in the type of system that West Virginia needs in order to have success, he could be the starter, guys. He could be the starter, and I don't understand why people are not seeing this. If you've been a lifelong West Virginia fan, how are you not seeing this? Hello, 1988. The first time West Virginia had any type of great success, it was under an offense just like this. We went undefeated, went to the National Championship. Of course, we lost another name because Major Harris got hurt, but Major Harris was our first dual-threat quarterback. And West Virginia had major success under Major Harris. Yes, we had an undefeated season in 1993 as well. Mostly Jake Kelsner was the starting quarterback. But we sprinkled in some Darren Studstill, who was a dual threat quarterback. And he made that system work. We had a true two quarterback system. Everybody remembers Jake Kelsner, but most people forget about Darren Studstill. Remember people, he played a vital part in that undefeated season for West Virginia. Then we fast forward to the Rich Rod days. Pat White, who can ever forget that? Nobody. Nobody. What type of offense did we run under Pat White? That's right. The dual threat, run first, RPO. Quarterback can make plays whenever the play breaks down. And we had massive success. The most success we've had as far as consistently at West Virginia. Even in the Dana Holgerson era. Everybody remembers 2018. Will Greer, David Steeles. Everybody remembers that offense. People forget we went 8-4 and four that year. There was one year where we had a 10-win season. Anybody remember the quarterback for that one year? It was 2016, Skylar Howard. And no, Skylar Howard wasn't this amazing quarterback. But he was the dual threat, tough quarterback that we needed. What happened? West Virginia had 10 wins. This is not a coincidence, people. Think about it. Every time West Virginia's had massive success, it's been with the offense where we spread you out, run the ball first, pass it when necessary, and have a quarterback that can make a play whenever the play breaks down and can make plays whenever they call a quarterback run designed play. And that's what we have in Garrett Green. So if we learn anything from past mistakes and past fortune, it's that West Virginia needs that type of offense. So I don't care whether you like that offense or not. I, I honestly don't care. Honestly, it's not my favorite offense. That doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. 
I love the air raid offense. I love passing it, you know, 400 yards a game, lighting the scoreboard up. But the problem is, whenever we had those offenses, we kind of scored too fast, and our defenses got worn out, and eventually the opposing offenses wore our defense out, and that's how we lost the game. But the spread offense with an RPO quarterback who can pass the ball when he needs to, but he can run the ball as well, you actually wear the opposing defenses out. You don't score too quick, but you move the chains, keep their defense on the field for a very long time, and yes, score when you need to. That's the type of offense that West Virginia needs. I'm telling you guys, that I mean, look at history. All you have to do is look at history. 1988, 1993, 2006, 2007, 2008, 2016. It's all there. It's all in the history books. And it all has one common denominator. And that's had the offense run spread offense, run first, pass when you need to, and a quarterback that can use his legs. That is the key to success at West Virginia. We have got to accept that. We have got to learn to accept that. It's not about, well, you know, that's been that's been 30 years ago. That's been 15 years ago. That's been like 7, 8 years ago. Yeah, but every time it's worked. From the 35 years ago up to the 15 years ago, that was 20 years in between, still worked. From the 15 years ago to about 7, 8 years ago, there was some time in between, still worked. I'm telling you, it would still work. As long as you have the right quarterback that can run the offense. And I do think that Garrett Green could be the right quarterback to run that particular type of offense. We saw last Saturday that when you put Garrett Green in for an entire game and you run the offense that is catered to him, he is a heck of a quarterback. He is the right quarterback for that specific system, and it gives fits to the opposing defense. Fits. And I'm not saying that Garrett Green should be the future of West Virginia. I'm saying that West Virginia should focus on recruiting quarterbacks like that and run that type of offense. There's probably other quarterbacks out there that are like Garrett Green that are better than Garrett Green. Those are the quarterbacks that West Virginia needs to focus on. We need that true dual threat quarterback that can hurt the defense with his legs. Because our run game, as good as it is, it still needs some help from time to time. And a quarterback that can use his legs, that's the exact help that they need. A quarterback that can still pass the ball. And if you watch the game against Oklahoma, Garrett Green threw some good passes. He's not the greatest passer in the world. That's not what I'm saying. But when he needed a pass, he made some good throws. Two crucial fourth down conversions was made on the arm of Garrett Green, not the legs of Garrett Green. People have forgotten about that. So don't get it twisted. I'm not saying that Garrett Green is the next Pat White. That is not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is he is the type of quarterback that West Virginia needs to succeed. West Virginia needs to learn from his past mistakes, and West Virginia needs to learn from his past success. What works for West Virginia? What works for West Virginia is that spread offense where we run it first, pass it when we need to, and we have a quarterback that can hurt the defenses with his legs. I mean, that's the bottom line. Whether you like it or not, that's irrelevant. That's the type of offense that West Virginia absolutely needs if they want to succeed, especially now in the Big 12. With all the great offenses that Dana Holgerson put out there, the one offense that worked the best as far as having the most wins in a particular season was that spread offense, run it first, quarterback hurt you with his legs, 10 win season in 2016. Face facts, people, this is what West Virginia needs. So when we hit the recruiting trail, we need to recruit on offense specifically to cater to that type of offense. Keep recruiting great running backs. Start recruiting quarterbacks that, yes, can throw the ball, but can also hurt you with his legs. That's what we need to focus on because that's when West Virginia has the most success. Y'all let me know in the comments section, was this an aha moment? Man, he's right. Every time West Virginia's had success, it is with that type of offense. Or are you still stuck with the, no, we need a quarterback that can throw it 40 yards downfield, air raid offense, even though we've never had any type of real success? That's all I got for for this show. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you on my next show.